five. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 31 to 33. Growing Godly Marriages is our series of study in Ephesians. For this cause, Shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife? And they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her that she reverence her husband now go with me to Genesis because this is where we would find uh, the verse for this cause, the, the phrase for this cause, shall a man leave his father and mother, so on and so forth. So Genesis, go with me to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis 2. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in, uh, instead thereof and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man and Adam said, this is now a bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh and they were both naked the man and his wife and they were not ashamed may the Lord bless the reading of his holy and infallible word wala na po sigurong mas hahalaga pa lalo na sa pangmatagalang katatagan ng lipunan in general society and uh, the church in particular because our main concern is the church wala nang mas hahalaga pa dito kundi ang isang matatag na matatatag na mga pamilya. Matatag ang lipunan, matatag ang simbahan, kung matatag ang mga pamilya. At matatag ang pamilya kung matatag ang pagsasama ng mag-asawa. Doon naka-predicate, doon nakatayo ang katatagan ng pamilya. Healthy marriages produce healthy families. Ganon kasimple yun. 
At kung matatag ang bawat pamilya, matatag ang iglesia, ang simbahan. Dahil sa kahalagahan nito, wala tayong karapatan na i-redefine ito. Wala tayong karapatan na bigyan ng ibang kahulugan ito. Hindi tayo ang nagtatag ng pagsasama mag-asawa. Hindi tayo ang nagtatag ng pagsasama pamilya. Ang Diyos, this is God's creation. This is God's doing. Nakatayo dito sa katatagan ng pamilya lalo na ng pagsasama bilang mag-asawa yung distinction sa pagitan ng lalaki at ng babae mahalaga nating maunawaan na hindi tayo iniwan ng uh, nangangapa kung ano ang nakapalo sa pagsasamang ito. Do sa Genesis chapter 1 and the verse is 27, maliwanag na sinasabi, So God created man in His own image, in the image of God created He Him. Male and female created He them. So mahalagang linawi natin kung ano ang biblikal na pakahulugan ng pagsasamang mag-asawa. Ito ay kinapapalooban ng pagsasama ng isang lalaki at ng isang babae. Gender is God's idea. Ang kasarian ay pag-iisip ng Diyos galing sa Diyos. God created human beings in His own image. In the image of God, He created them. How? He created them. What? He created them male and female. Itong paglikha na ito ay nangyari bago pa bumagsak ang tao sa kasalanan, nilinaw na ng Panginoong Diyos kung sino ang bubuo ng pagsasamang mag-asawa, isang lalaki, isang babae. Dapat din siguro linawin yun. Isang lalaki, isang babae. Male, hindi males, and female hindi females amen hindi itinuturo ng Biblia ang polygamy and polyandry if I'm not mistaken uh, Paul, am I right? yung pagsasama ng maraming asawang lalaki at isang asawang babae hindi mo yun makikita sa pagtuturo ng banal na kasulatan. At ang tawag ng Biblia dito, mabuti. Kung papanong mabuti ang ibang bahagi ng kanyang paglalang, mabuti na ang bubuo ng pagsasama mag-asawa ay pagsasama ng isang lalaki at pagsasama ng isang babae. Amen? At mahalaga na ating kilalanin yung pagkakaiba-iba natin. You see? 
Hindi ito battle of the sexes. Hindi ito mas mahusay ang babae over their uh, male counterpart and vice versa. Hindi ito yung I have that book. Mars are uh, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Merong kagandahan. There is beauty in the uniqueness of the female species of the uh, human race as well as the male species of the human race. Asabi po ng Romans 15 and the verse is 7, Accept each other just as Christ has accepted you so that God will be given glory. Tanggapin natin ang ating pagkakaibayba. Huwag piliting ang lalaki ay magpakababae at ang babae ay magpakalalaki. Dahil hindi gayon. Kung ang lalaki ay nagpapaka-gentleman at inaabot ang kamay mo at inaalalayan, mano nang iabot mo yung kamay mo at paalalay ka. Hindi yung nagtatangka pa lang yung lalaki na maging maginoy. Don't do that. For example, example of these differences, I read somewhere, and let me quote, the way we respond to food. When a man eats, the part of his brain that makes him feel happier is stimulated. As a result, he is more content and listens with more patience. Amen? Pakainin mo muna ako. Makikinig ako sa'yo hanggang gabi. Basta busog ako. Amen? Dada ka na ng dada. Kumakalampansik mo ra ko. Wala kahit isang salita mo ang pumasok sa isip ko. Ang naririnig ko Ayong umaawit na tiyan. Ladies, now you know the secret. Amen? Learn how to prepare good food. Prepare them, don't eat them. Kaya ikaw ang tumataba. Giingat ako ng tingin ka lang. Kaya ikaw ang tumataba. <laughs> By the way, nothing is wrong with that per se. It's in the metabolism. Amen? Yes. Tignan mo kasi yung pinanggalingan niya. Gusto mo palang mapangasawa, eh, payat na payat. Hindi mo napansin kung ganong katawan ang lola niya. Para mapaibig ka, isang linggo hindi kumain yun. Babalik din sa dati yun. Walang masama doon. At huwag pilitin ng bawat isa na maging kagaya ng iba. Amen? Kung ganun ang katawang ibinigay sa'yo, edi wow. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Totoo yun. Nothing wrong with that. Ang definisyon ng kagandahan ay hindi yung dahil payat na payat kang para ka nang mayroong anoreksiya. 
That's wrong. Very, very wrong. Dahil hindi mo ba siya kakulay? Dahil hindi mo ba siya kakatawan? Inferior na sa sayo? Wrong. That's a kind of image that is imposed upon us by others. Magpakatotoo tayo, mga kapatid. Amen ba ulit? Amen. Pinipilit mo maputi, maitim ang lola mo. Black is beautiful. Dumerecho na tayo. The way we respond to food when a man eats, the part of his brain that makes him feel happier is stimulated. As a result, he is more content and listens with more patience. When a woman eats, the part of his, her brain that sharpens her eyesight is stimulated. She becomes more aware of her environment and has more to talk about. Magkaiba ang na-stimulate. Pagkabusog ang lalaki, ah, sige, salita. I'm ready and willing to listen. Pagkabusog ang babae, malikot ang mata niya. Ah, dahil malikot ang mata niya, ang dami niyang kinukwento. Sige, kwento. <laughs> you see the difference? At mahalagang ma-recognize natin yung difference. This is one of the reasons so many good relationship memories are made over meals. Our bodies are designed to enhance relationships while we share food. That's why I always say the family that eats together is stay together. Mas ready ang mga kalalaki ang makinig at mas gusto mo na magkwento. Okay. I like that deal. I eat, you talk. So galing sa Diyos, itong ideya na ito, male and female, let us not redefine it. Again, let me read verse uh, chapter 1 of Genesis. And the verse is 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. Ang image ng Diyos sa kanyang uh, pangkalahatan ay inilalarawan hindi lang ng mga kalalakihan kundi ng mga kababaihan combined. May mga katangian ang Diyos na mas mailalarawan ng katangian meron ng mga kababaihan. Amen? When we talk about strength and power that would be in the realm of uh, uh, the gentleman. But when we talk about childbearing and uh, sustaining the children, so on and so forth, that is in the realm of uh, the women. At parehong katangian ito ng Diyos. Kaya napansin nyo ang sabi, ano, He created man in His image Male and female, He created He them. Hindi lang kalakihan ang nagdadala ng larawan ng Diyos, imago dei, hindi lang ang kababaihan ang nagtataglay ng larawan ng Diyos, kundi lalaki at babae magkasama, sila ang nagpapahayag ng mas kumpletong katangian ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Although, we also submit that every one of us is created in the image of God as per Genesis chapter 9 uh, tells us. Ang 
At dahil ang bawat tao ay nilikha sa larawan ng Diyos, mahalaga na pag, pag-ukulan natin sila ng pagpapahalaga. We are not to look down on anyone. Kahit iba sila sa atin. Ilang beses natin pinagtatawanan ang nagbibihis ng kakaiba. May buhok na kakaiba. Umaas ang kakaiba. No! We are to respect. Our differences. Minsan, nagkaiba lang ng political view. Parang gusto mo nang patayin. Mali po yun. It was C.S. Lewis who once said, and let me quote him, It may be possible for each to think too much of his own potential glory hereafter. It is hardly possible for him to think too often or too deeply about that of his neighbor. Palagi ang nakikita natin ay yung ating kagalingan, kadakilaan, at uh, halos imposible nating makita na may kagalingan sa iba na may kausayan sa iba na sila man ay nilikha sa larawan ng Diyos hindi lang ikaw the load or weight or burden of my neighbor's glory should be laid daily on my back a load so heavy that only humility can carry it and the backs of the proud will be broken. Ang kailangan natin ay diwa ng kababaang loob. Bawat isa ay special and unique. Everyone is uh, uniquely created by God. Hindi dahil iba siya sa akin, mas pangit na siya, mas imperior na siya. Yung kababaang loob ang magtuturo sa atin na makilala na siya ay mayroong espesyal na layunin bakit siya nilikha ng Diyos. It is a serious thing to live in a sight of possible gods and goddesses to remember that the dullest and most uninteresting person you talk to may one day be a creature which if you saw it now you would be strongly tempted to worship baka yung dinadaan-daanan mo lang baka yung hinahamak mo kung makikita mo siya sa hinaharap na panahon baka nga raw matukso kang sambahin pa siya o hangaan siya Be good to everyone. Respect everyone. Sa loob ng simbahan, yung may sasakyan lang, yung alam mong mayaman lang, yung alam mong may aral lang, ang pinagpapahalagahan mo, yung mga taong pakilamda mo, wala namang pakilabang na matukuha ka sa kanila, binabaliwala mo, hindi mo alam kung ano sila sa hinaharap. Baka raw kung alam mo na kung ano sila magiging sa inaharap. Baka amu-amuhin mo na sila ngayon. At mahal-mahalin mo sila ngayon. Pero kahit wala yun, the mere fact that they were created by God and that they uh, reflect the image of God is reason enough for us to respect them, you see. All day long, we are, in some degree, helping each other to one or other of these destinations, you see. I'm sorry, so that you may understand the context. 
or else, sabi niya, a horror and a corruption just as you now meet, if at all, only in a nightmare. All day long we are in some degree helping each other to one or other of these destinations. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Meron tayong kinalaman kung sila man ay lalakad palapit sa Diyos o kung sila ay lalapad, lalakad palayo sa Diyos. Minsan yung simpleng-simpleng, wala naman akong halaga sa pagsasama-sama nila. Sila-sila lang. Hindi na lang ako sasamba. May kinalaman na tayo sa kung ano ang mga pagkapasyang ginagawa niya na may kinalaman sa pananampalataya niya, sa pagkaunawa niya. It is in the light of these overwhelming possibilities. I am still reading C.S. Lewis. It is with the awe and circumspection proper to them that we should conduct all our dealings with one another, all friendships, all loves, all play, all politics. These are no ordinary people. You have never talked to a mere mortal. Lahat, mga kapatid, ay espesyal na nilikha ng Diyos. Hindi siya karaniwan. Bear that in mind. Always remember that. Baka mo may isa isang tabi ang isang tao na kung kilala mo lang sana siya ng mayaman ay may, kung kilala mo lang sana siya ng mas malalim may sasabihin mo isa siyang kayamanan. Amen? In fact, dapat patuloy kang nagnanais na makilala ang bawat isa. Do not be easily contented with your sphere of friends. Baka hindi mo na di-discover, kapatid, na ang tunay palang kaibigan ay matagal mo nang dinadaan-daanan. Amen? Nations, cultures, arts, civilizations, these are mortal. And their life is to ours as the life of a nut. Wala lang, kulisap lang, insecto lang. But it is immortals whom we joke with, work with, marry, snub, exploit, immortal horrors or everlasting splendors. This does not mean that we are to be perpetual, perpetually solemn. We must play, but our merriment must be of that kind. And it is in fact the merriment, merriest kind which exists between people who have from the outset taken each other seriously. No flippancy, no superiority, no presumption. Wow! Yung mga ipinakikipaglaban mo, ipinakikipagkagalit uh, mo na mga political ideas, so on and so forth, mawawala rin yan eh. Pero yung araw-araw mong kasama, kabiruan mo, kausap mo, Ito raw ang walang hanggan. Either walang hanggang mag-google doon sa kapahamakan o mag-google ng walang hanggan doon sa kaluwalatian. And our charity must be real and costly love. O ulitin ko mga kapatid yung kanina, hindi ko na balikan ko lang sandali. Again, ang sabi, which exists between people who have from the outset taken each other seriously, not flippancy, or no flippancy, no superiority, no presumption. Hindi dahil mas may aral ka, mas mababa siya. Hindi dahil mas may pera ka, mas mababa siya. No! 
You're equal. Bakit? Pareho kayong nilikha ng iisang Diyos. No presumption. And our charity must be real and costly love with deep feeling for the sins in spite of which we love the sinner. No mere tolerance or indulgence which parodies love as flippancy parodies merriment. Next to the blessed sacrament itself, your neighbor is the holiest object presented to your senses. Ramdam ba ng mga tao sa labas? Ramdam ba ng mga kaibigan mo, lalo na yung mga hindi mara ng palataya, that you genuinely care for their soul? Na hindi ka lang mabait sa kanila kasi gusto mo silang akitin sa isang klase ng palataya. Kung di talaga nakikita mo yung true value, yung kahalagahan ng kaluluwa ng bawat isa. At dahil sobrang halaga pa, gusto kitang abutin. And I want to establish a relationship with you, a lasting one. A kind of relationship that we could continue to enjoy even after this life. Ganun ba tayo kumakalinga sa kaluluwa ng bawat isa? And I said all of this for us to understand na bagamat merong iba na merong ibang sexual preferences may buo tayong kapakumbabaang abutin sila ng mga kahotohanan ng salita ng Diyos. Because we must admit that their struggle is real. As real as our struggles are. Amen? Amen? Ilang beses natin natagpuan ng ating sarili, pinagtatawanan, ang malambot lumakad, ang malambot magsalita. Ilang beses natin nakikita ang ating sarili na nilulok down yung babae na parang lalaki yung gumilos. And so on and so forth. Nakakalimutan natin na kahit sa ganong kalagayan, sila ay nilalang sa larawan ng Diyos at mahalaga yung kaluluwa nila. O oh, makilala na wa ang Sovereign Grace Baptist Church na may gayong kaseryosohan sa pagmiministeryo sa puso at kaluluwa ng bawat isang tao regardless kung sino pa sila. But then again, gusto nating diinan. And so far as the Bible is concerned, there are only two sexes, genders, male, female. Sa Facebook, ini-introduce na nila. As far as I know, Ginagawa na ito in the United Kingdom and in some parts of North America na pagkagagawa ka ng account, ang choices mo ay hindi na lamang male or female. But that there are 50 others. 50 other choices, you see. I tried to follow it up and let me give you some example of examples of these uh, 50 choices. A gender, by gender, cisgender, 
female to male, gender fluid, gender questioning. I'm not female, I'm not male, I am gender questioning. Gender variant, gender queer, intersex, neither, neutrals, non-binary, pan-gender, trans-female, trans-male, trans-person, transsexual, two-spirit, and so on and so forth. Malinaw ang tayo ng bananakasulatan sa usapin na ito. Hindi ito likas. Romans chapter 1 verses 26 and 27 says, Let's go there for a while. Romans chapter 1. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did not change the natural use. Oh, sorry. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, against nature, unnatural. And likewise, verse 27, also the men having the natural use, uh, leaving the natural use of the woman burned in the last one toward another, men with men working that which is uh, unseemly and receiving uh, in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. It's a natural. Homosexuality is unnatural. Lesbianism is unnatural. It is against nature. Kahit panong sabihin mo, kung ikaw ay nilalang ng Diyos na lalaki, lalaki ka. Kung ikaw ay nilalang ng Diyos na babae, babae ka. Kahit ano pa ang isipin mo. You cannot change the fact that you are who you are as God created you. Amen? Can you imagine kung ganun din, not only in gender, ganun din sa age? E ayokong isipin ako ay 40 plus na eh. Gusto ko isipin 17 lang ako. So pwede ba ilagay ko sa Facebook o kung saan mang biodata, age 17. Would that work? Would that be acceptable? Kung gusto ko isipin seven foot ako, seven feet uh, tall ako, pwede ba yun? Dahil gusto ko lang isipin? No! Kung gusto ko sabihin French ako, okay pa yun? Mago ba yun? Mga kapatu? Gutom na kayo? Ang init, no? I'm telling you, brethren, kahit ano ang isipin natin, tayo ay tao, tayo ay tayo. They have now invented uh, another terminology. Uh, sexu sexual malleability. Sexual plasticity, elasticity, so on and so forth. Fluid, Jenny. 
fluidity. Huh? You are what you think you are, sabi nila. Hindi po! Hindi maaari! At tungkulin natin na patuloy na ipinawa sa bawat isa sa Espiritu, sa diwa ng pag that what they need in the same manner that what we need it's God's mercy God's love and God's power there is power in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ St. Paul said in the book of Corinthians 1 Corinthians 6 some but some uh, l- let me read Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. Oh, let me uh, begin reading on uh, verse uh, 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Sa loob ng Corinthian Church, meron silang mga kasama na dating homosexuals. Ngunit sa kapangyarihan ng Diyos, nagbago sila, binago sila. There is hope in God. May pag-asa sa ating uh, Panginoong Diyos. You see, hindi natin pinagtatawanan ang ganitong hamon sa ilan nating sa mga ka, sa ilang kapwa natin ngunit gusto rin nating patuloy na ipagtanggol at alagaan at sundin ang atas sa atin ng Panginoong Diyos in Hebrews chapter 13 and the verses 4 that we are to keep marriage honorable and so far as our God is concerned, ang pag-aasawa ay sa pagitan lamang ng isang lalaki at ng isang babae. At yun lamang ang posible kung titignan natin kung ano ang purpose, one of the many purposes, bakit, uh, why uh, marriage in the first place was uh, instituted. One of which is uh, procreation. Go and multiply. Preacher Joel, go. Uh, Miss Ren, go. And make it quick. Naiinip na mga lolo lola. Go and multiply. Yung obligasyon na yan ay imposible. Sa pagsasama ng male and male, and female and female. Again, let me read. Advocates of so-called gay marriage make the argument that to deny homosexuals marriage is manifestly unfair. It is not unfair. Gays and lesbians are not unworthy of marriage. They are incapable of marriage. Hindi natin sinasabi, oh, kayo, hindi kayo karapat-dapat. Hindi, kundi, hindi nyo kaya sa pagkatalayunin ng kasal at pagsasama so that they may go and multiply according to God's mercy and grace. Amen?
They are no longer two but one. One flesh. Iisa na lamang sila. One person is the uh, literal reading. Sakto sila sa uh, isa't isa. What is lacking and the other is being compensated by uh, what is lacking on one is being compensated by the other. Gayun po ang pagsasama ng dalawang mag uh, uh, magsingiro. Let's go back to Genesis. Verse 21. Genesis chapter 2 and the verse is 21. I have to uh, give place to this discussion because I do not want you to be totally uh, unaware of where we stand as a church and as believers sa usapin na ito. Sasabihin ng iba, may kaibigan kasi akong homosexual, marami. Eh ano ngayon? Hindi ba? Kanina ay diniing ko na. Mahalin mo sila! Sapagkat kaluluwa sila at ano man ang kalagayan nila, sila inilikha sa larawan ng Diyos. Pero abutin mo sila. Pagkat posible ang pagliligtas ng Diyos. Amen? Ang tanong, are you making some efforts towards that end? Yun yung tanong. O nakukontento ka na na magkakaibigan tayo, magkakasama tayo eh. Pero buhay mo yan, higila. Buhay mo to, higila. No! May mas malalim tayong obligasyon sa kanila. Ipeunawa sa kanila na may pag-asa sa ating Panginoon. Na yung vacuum na nasa loob nila ay pwedeng punan ng ating Panginoon. In the same manner na yung mga walang asawa dito ay pwedeng punan ng Panginoon ang kakulangan na meron sa inyo. Again, let's go back. Genesis chapter 2. Uh, and the verse is 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh uh, instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. At ano ang reaction ng lalaki ni Adam? Verse 23. And Adam said, This is, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, Isha, because she was taken, uh, taken out of man, Ish. Hindi siya iba sa akin. Kaya pati yung pangalan na ibibigay ko sa kanya ay tutugma sa kung sino siya sa buhay ko. Ano ibig sabihin noong this is now? Alam mo ninyo, merong rhyme sa original. Itong bahaging ito, ang totoo, pagmulat ng mata ni Adan, napatula siya. Napatulala at napatula at napaawit siya. Ano inawit niya? Ang equivalent ng this is now ay at last at last, my love has come along now. My lonely days are over. Amen. <laughs> Praise be to God. Yun ang nangyari. At last, may kagalakan. Hindi yung abag dumarating, yung bride, iyak ka na iyak. Dahil iniisip mo kung gaano ka na kayo kinasus mo. Kapira. Nakakamahal mong pagkasalan ka. As I see you, 
I now know who I am. Habang tinitignan kita, alam ko na kung sino ako. Matagal akong ligaw. Mr. Giraffe, Mrs. Giraffe, Mr. Turtle, Mrs. Turtle, Mr. Adam, where is Mrs. Adam? Wala! That's why the Lord had him to go through the process of naming the animals. Para makita niya, walang para sa akin, walang tugma para sa akin. Ang sabi noong uh, uh, ang sabi ng scripture verse 20 let's read Genesis 2 20 and Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field nakita niya yung uh, uh, love birds <laughs> put pa yung love birds ano yung tuka sa isa't isa? Ang saya sa lila. Kalapati yan. Lovebirds ba? Ganun ba tunog ng lovebirds? Ayo. Pero ako, nasaan? Ang sabi, <clears throat> tignan ninyo kung paano nag-end. Malungkot eh. Sabi, but for Adam, there was not found an help meet for him natapos yung talata sa kalungkutan wala imagine mo kung gaano katagal yung process of naming animals sabi ko nga nung araw nung, nung una mahaba pa eh hippopotamus sa gawing dulo dog cat bird <laughs> ah ubusan na kaya explainable ano and understandable bakit nung dumating pagdilat na natulog siya ng malungkot pagdilat niya at last amen o baka iba'y kanta mo di ba <laughs> Hindi lamang dinadala sa akin ang iba sa akin. Ang dinadala sa akin ay kapupunan ko. Kukumpleto sa akin. Tutulungan niya akong makita kung sino ako. At hindi nyo ba nakita yan una sa sarili nyo, pangalawa sa mga anak nyo at sa mga taong ma- malapit sa inyo? Lulukulukulang, lulu, lulu, wala lang. Ano? Nang umibig sumipag, nang umibig nag, nag, ayos ng sarili, nang umibig gusto na tapusin ang pag-aaral. Amen? Mami magtatapos ako, gusto ko maging astronaut. Eh, nung wala pang sinisinta. Computer, computer, puro ka na computer. Nang nakakita na ng sisintay, gusto ko mga pre- maging presidente ng Pilipinas. Nasa paraiso siya eh. Pero may kulang. At alam ng Diyos ko ano kulang. Ang Diyos ang lumikha ng sitwasyon para maramdaman niyang may kulang. Sapagat ang layuli ng Panginoong Diyos magdadala ng kalawalatihan sa Kanya. Hindi lang ang lalaki, hindi lang ang babae, kundi lalaki at babae na pinagsama ng Diyos. Marriage is God's creation as well. Sino nagsama? Sino nagdala sa babae sa lalaki? Ang Diyos. 
Matthew says, ang pinagsama ng Diyos. Huwag papaghiwalayin ang tao. That's why no human being has the right to redefine marriage because marriage is not our creation. Marriage is God's creation. Help me. Help. Izer in the Hebrew. Ano ibig sabihin? Yung salitang help doon ay kasing kahulugan. It's a military term. Nang na ibig sabihin ay rescue. Nandun ka para umalalay. Ikaw yung kinakailangan puwersa. You cannot rescue someone if you do not have the power and the ability to do so. Amen? Tandaan natin, sino ba ang alon? Si Adam ang alon! Sabi ng mga kalalakihan, pasalamat ka, dumating ako sa buhay mo. Kung hindi, tatanda kang dalaga. Siya nga, baliktad! Sa Biblia, ang lalaki ang alon. Ang lalaki ang kulang-kulang. At ang rescue sa lalaking mababaliw niya ay ang babae. Ay, sir, siya ang magsasalba ng magulumong buhay. Amen? Amen. Praise be to God. <laughs> Ang dala ng babae sa buhay ng lalaki ay strength and power. Yun ang dala. Ako si Superman. Pagkasama kita, ha? Kung mawawala ka, Spider-Man na lang. Praise be to God. Kasalanan mo kung bakit si Superman yung naging Spider-Man. Help me. A helper that is suitable for him. Sa ibang salin, sa ibang unawa, I will make a helper like opposite him. Like opposite him. Kamukha niya pero iba sa kanya. Parang two pieces of a puzzle. Jigsaw puzzle. Para mo sila mapagtugma, dapat lapat sila. Pero para maging lapat sila, dapat hindi sila pareho ng hukis. Para lumapat sila. Eh kung magkamukha mo, magkamukha sila, ang kurba ay pareho nasa kanan. Paano paglalapatin yung pareho nasa kanan? Magkaiba, pero lapat. Gayon kayo sa isa't isa. I'm telling you, mga kapatid, minsan din natin na-appreciate yan eh. Sabi nga, ano, sa likod ng pagtagumpay ng mga kalakihan ay ano? Sige, sabi nyo. It was God Himself who united a man and a woman in marriage. Marriage, therefore, is a divine institution, not a human one. Consequently, God, not man, has the right to define the terms of this institution. And you know what, brethren? Ano po ang larawan na ipinakita sa atin sa banal na kasulatan, especially in Revelation? When we all get to heaven, brethren, we shall be part of the marriage supper of the Lamb. What a glorious sight. Tayo bilang mga mananampalataya 
Haya harap sa Diyos. Spotless. Dress in white. At siya bi kumakatawa na, na, na ilalarawa ng bridegroom o ng groom ay naghihintay ng may pananabi. At tayo'y magsasama <coughs> ng walang hangga. Sa dinami-dami ng larawang pwedeng piliin ng Diyos, pinili niya ang larawan ng marriage. Nire-reflect natin yan sa buhay ng bawat isa. May struggle ang mga homosexuals and we ought to be there to help them, there, to guide them. But then, brethren, how about your own struggle in your relationship? Kung sila ay aakiti ng kadakilaan ng Diyos sa buhay ng bawat isa, naaakiti kaya sila sa relasyon na meron tayo bilang mag-aasal. Yan yung hapon na inilalatag sa atin ang bananakasulatan. We are no longer two, but one. Pinasama, pinagsama tayo ng Diyos. Let us glorify Him in our married relationship. How about the singles? The Bible says, others will be given the ability to live alone. You would be sustained by God. You don't have to commit sin para lang matugunan ang need mo. God is enough for each and every one of us. Let's all stand up.